What's happening everybody? Today we're talking about curved concrete countertops. How about a curved bar top? Let's make something cool. Adding curves to your concrete can add a dramatic yet elegant look. So we're going to just jump right into making this mold. So we're going to start by talking about the material we're going to use. So the key to this project is going to be using a material called whiteboard. It's similar to Malamine where it's got a nice plastic finish on it, but instead of being a particle board substrate, it's a hardboard substrate, making it nice and flexible to get those smooth, subtle curves for our mold. Let's cut the base to a more manageable size, then rip two strips at an inch and a half thick. We need to make a cardboard template. And I'm gonna show you how to do that simply by using a nail and a string. I'm gonna show you guys an old trick. First, you're gonna tie a little loop on the end of your string. And you're gonna take one of these really cool clamps you're going to clamp it down at the end of the table, right at the edge. And you're going to draw your line along the bench. Now we can hang our tape measure right in the end. And then we're going to make our two marks for our inner and our outer radius. In this case, our radius is 3 foot, 6 inches, 9 sixteenths. Our outer radius is 2 foot, 5 inches, and 11 sixteenths. Insert a 16 penny nail through the loop, drive the nail into the ground, and this will be our pivot point for the string. Then position a marker at the marks you made and draw the arc. Also, don't go leaving nails in your driveway. Simply cut the template out with a razor. Now that we have our cardboard template cut out and our base cut, all we have to do is trace our template. Now that we have our template traced, I like to start by attaching the straight ends first. That'll give our flexible pieces something to attach themselves onto. I like to use a pilot drill with a countersink and drill one inch deep. Then screw an inch and a quarter spack screw into the base. Clamp the other side down and repeat. Now we're gonna make several anchor blocks made from your scrap. Place the blocks just behind the curved lines, about a foot apart, and attach them however you want.
know you're watching me do a lot of tedious steps, but I promise the juice is worth the squeeze. Rip one and a half inch strips of the flexible hardboard and attach them at both ends using brad nails or screws. But do not use brads or screws on the anchor points. We're going to use Rapid Set Flexible Construction Adhesive to secure and seal the hardboard to our anchor points instead of using mechanical fasteners. This will avoid any nasty holes on the inside of our mold. Turn the mold around and repeat. I promise this is all totally going to make sense in the end. That's pretty much it. We have our sides secured. We have our flexible sides sealed and secured. Um, it's pretty much ready to go at this point, but uh, I want to take it just one step further. We're gonna get all Pinteresty up in here. We're gonna make our concrete countertop just a little bit more visually appealing. We're just gonna give it a little more mm, just by simply adding a little trim. So let's go to our local home center and let's go check out their molding aisle. Check out this aisle. There are a hundred different profiles to choose from. Check it out. We're going to use polystyrene cove molding for our project. Butt the cove to one side of the mold and temporarily clamp it to the edge using spring clamps. And mark the cut. Run a bead of rapid set flexible construction adhesive and clamp in place. Spring clamps will save your life, and they only cost a dollar a piece. For the side, we just want to tack it in place because we're going to remove it after the first pour. I cut a cove joint at the end of this piece. I'll explain how to cut cove joints in a later video. it is cold outside it's about 19 degrees outside i made sure that two of these bags stayed inside overnight to warm up a little bit got myself some warm water spray the mold down with wd-40 and wipe off the excess If I plan on using a design, I will either print or draw my design on a sheet of paper, laminate it for durability, and cut it out with a razor. Now just sprinkle dry, sanded grout over the design. The WD-40 will help the design stay in place. For detailed instructions on how to mix Rapid Set Mortar Mix, just click on the link above or watch my How to Make a Concrete Countertop in One Hour video. Don't forget the flow control. This is gonna make your life so much easier. Pour the mortar mix in a spot that won't disturb your design and be ginger about it. The nice wet mix will flow right over the grout. If your mix is too thick, it'll push your design all over the place. And don't forget to tap those bubbles out. To 
depending on temperatures, you should be able to take your concrete countertop out of the mold in one hour. Oh, yeah! Now we gotta get this cleaned up and ready for pour number two. Since we're going to make a mirror image of the first slab, remove the left cove molding then cut and attach a new cove base for the right side. For the sink knockout, we're going to cut two pieces of three quarter inch malamine at 12 inches by nine and three eighths of an inch and sandwich them together. I used a drafting compass to mark my one and a half inch radius on all four corners. I used a drum sander to sand the corners down, but this would have been much easier with a belt sander. Let's make these rough edges nice and smooth with some packing tape. Normally, when I use rapid set cement, I don't bother using any kind of metal reinforcement or rebar. But with that being said, you want to use your best judgment. For instance, in this project, we've got a very skinny piece here and a very skinny piece up here. So we're going to put a piece right here and we're going to put a piece right here. I bought myself a four foot piece, cut it in half, making two two foot sections. Tap the rebar down about three quarters of an inch, but not all the way down to the bottom surface. Our next step is to mount this sink. In order to give us a more streamlined look, we're gonna undermount it instead of mount it on the top the way it was meant to be. But we can't use the hardware that it came with. Instead, we're gonna get anchors meant for concrete, one inch fender washers, and a masonry drill bit. 
this technique is going to save us several hundred dollars. An undermount sink would cost anywhere from two to three hundred dollars and it'd probably be special order and it won't come with a faucet. Hundred dollars and it comes with a faucet. Don't be intimidated. This is gonna be very easy and I'm gonna show you. Mark the depth at one inch with blue painter's tape and don't drill past the tape. I ran a bead of clear silicone on top of the sink before setting it into place. Now just insert your screw through the washer and secure the sink in place on all four corners. I cut a 15 degree bevel on all the pallets and just screw them together. Rapid set flexible construction adhesive is like hot sauce to me. I put that sh on everything. Seal the joint with rapid set non sag sealant and. Guys, thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, think of subscribing. I promise you won't regret it. I only open my KBSs up on special occasions. And uh, what better special occasion than 30 thousand subscribers in only two months with one video thank you guys so much cheers and i'll see you in the next one it is way too freaking cold to be drinking cold beer who am i kidding it's never too cold to drink cold beer right